I have a bad feeling about this. Find out what the fuck I'm doing on this week's <laughs> Weekly Big. You do not love losing. You lost. I feel I can't lose. I feel I can't lose. I'm mortal, immortal, immortal. What up, vlog? I have no idea if uh, the team was B rolling today. I feel like they weren't, but I was in the office all day, client shit, um, day after Kobe's passing, just gloomy, just like fucking, <sighs> fucking the wind knocked out of you. Um, so I hope everybody had a good day. I know it was tough for a lot of people and um, hopefully the team will film more tomorrow because I don't know what they were doing. Oh, here we go, we're back, we are back. All right, so right now we're we're uh, checking the lighting. D Rock, we have a little concept for Gary um, for an IG post. So he's about to head out of the office in about five to ten minutes. We're hoping to grab him on the way out, take a picture like this, edit it a little bit, and then throw it up. Okay. Is it good? Yep. We're waiting outside the room. I don't know why exactly we're waiting outside the room. I know why I'm waiting outside the room. I don't know why John's waiting outside the room. Yeah. What are you doing? Getting a couple of documents signed over here. And you know, it's another day, 6.30 on a Monday, long week ahead. Feels like a week already went by. We're gonna blindfold Gary. Yeah, he's gonna have fun. There's no chance we get it. There's a literal 0% chance. No chance. Or. 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 All right, here comes the man. Put money on it. We want to get a photograph of you being blindfolded. No. Right. No. Right in the conference room. You hate to see it. And that's why we don't put money on it. Well, the man's got to go. That's a uh, one for Lou and John, and zero for D Rock. Look at this kid though. He's not giving up. Look at him. Look at him. I respect it. Look at him. <laughs> That's pretty standard. It's pretty standard, honestly. Usually it takes a couple tries. D Rock's the most annoying person on the team, so usually he gets it first. Failed today, though, unfortunately. But we'll get him tomorrow. Is he here tomorrow? D Rock, is he here tomorrow? What? Is he here tomorrow? We'll get him tomorrow, and then we have another one coming tomorrow that we're cooking solo, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. So you'll see. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Justin. On the influencer side of Team Gary, you guys are about to meet Gavin. He's an influencer phenom, 12-year-old kid that started when he was nine. You got to see one of his first videos on YouTube. Um, he was doing some puppets, so you got to check it out. Now he's blown up to 1.3 million on, was it, TikTok. Um, he's going crazy. So take a look at the interview and have a good time. Is there anything I can help you with? Well, what I kind of wanted to talk to you about was social media. So okay. One thing that I really wanted to get on top of was, you know, hate. Yes. I'm to talk about like how you deal with hate. I'm happy to talk about because it. Because sometimes, you know, there's the times where it can really get to of you. Of course. And Especially at this age. Look, yeah. here's what I've here's what I did when I was in school when it wasn't an audience. It was just like kids in school. And it's definitely what I've done over the last 15 years. I actually think you need to think about being sympathetic to the person that's leaving the comment. Like what I always tell everybody is like, think about how sad a human has to be to watch something of yours and then leave something so that they could drag you down to their pain. So I don't get mad at people, especially because they don't know me. I actually feel bad for them. And there's something that happens when you start looking at, hey, you're not as cute as you think you are. You're not a good singer. Like, wait till you grow up. You're gonna be a drug addict. Like, whatever they write. If you actually see that from the perspective of like, man, I'm so grateful that I'm happy and doing what I like, and this person, like I always picture them. And it's not like some weird guy in a basement, it's just like a human that's living their life and they're, they're stuck in a bad place. Yeah. And the only no thing they know how to do in that moment is to try to drag somebody else at, because they're envious or jealous, and those are only out of them being unhappy. You're not envious and jealous when you're happy. Yeah. Like when I see you winning or somebody else winning, I get pumped. Mm -hmm. Because I think the world is abundant. Bro, I'm being really serious with you right now. 
you have to feel bad for them. And the second that becomes the way you practice it, because if you're accepting it, that means you have that own, that means you're taking on that insecurity. That's you. When somebody's shitting on you, that's you speaking to yourself about your insecurities. Yeah. And we all have them at your age. But like, I promise you, bro, you should be very grateful that you're not on the other side of that comment. And, another- and it doesn't mean I don't hear them or fuck them. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's like, fuck haters or eat fuck trolls. Mm-mm-mm. I'm actually the reverse. I'm sympathetic to it. I love the people that hate me because I wish them more happiness. Hey vlog, it's Katie. I influence the influencers for Mr. Gary Vaynerchuk. If you follow me this way, I'll show you what's by my desk. First things first, hydration station. Um, it's, it's marked by the times so that I'm always drinking water because you spend long days here. Uh, noise cancel headphones, block out the haters. We have two monitors because I do a lot of stuff. Blue light lenses because got to save the eyes. Gum, because I'm the gum plug on the team. You need gum? Zane? Got some gum. <laughs> Lip balm, because we've got plant clippers, because I got a new plant. It's a pothos, great office plant. Um, we have some stickers, because Anti-Bully Kindness Club over here. Initiation tonight, 7 p.m. We have this, because we were sent this, and zero fucks are given. Oh, May and I like to play four, uh, what is this? Not four square. Connect for when we need a little mental break, you know? Also, forgot to show you. This Polaroid of the D'Amelio family. A, 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 TikTok stars. So uh, yeah, that's my desk, rated out of a 10. Now back to the vlog. Uh, can I ask Dania, if you're filming today, I would highly recommend that you work with the admins right now and try to interview the people that I had meetings with today to see what they thought about the meeting. And if they don't, uh, if they're not interested, no pressure. Like literally blast, Lou, can you email right now with Dania on it? Like, hey, we're doing something for, for Gary's vlog of like interviewing people who were in meetings with Gary today about how the meeting went. And in caps, no pressure, but if you're interested, let us know we want to interview you right now. That's what I want to do. Let the rest of the team know. I want to B-roll everything. And then if you can't film the meeting, but the person's willing to fucking talk about it, then it's, what did Rogoff think? What did Meg think? What did Shirley think? And no pressure, caps. Everybody I've met with today. I think it'd be really fucking cool. Hi, Chanel. Hi. I'll be with you in 30 seconds. You can go in. <laughs> what you doing? I'm just gonna film something real quick. So, Brandon's gonna sit here. You're playing Call of Duty, you're not actually playing Call okay. of Duty. Uh, I'm gonna get a wide shot right now, then I'm gonna come back. Hurry, another easy victory for the G-Man. <laughs> Dania, for the vlog, one of the most iconic moments of my life is Brandon slept over my house in 1992 before a card show. Brandon didn't like football, didn't play Madden. But like, and we played Madden on Genesis and the first game I beat, I beat him bad and I think the second game, or maybe not even, maybe not even. Maybe that's just me trying to make myself feel better. Here's the punchline. He used the Bears because he was a Cubs fan, so he used the Bears so, for Chicago. We played Madden and he beat me. When I tell you, what happened next is all time. It was like one in the morning and we had a card show at like seven. I wouldn't let him go to sleep because we had to play again. And I beat him like 72 to nothing because he wasn't trying because his move was I'm gonna not play. But I refused to let that move work and just kept beating the fuck out of him, making pretend that he was trying. It is literally still one of our favorite stories. But the best part was he actually had a brilliant counter move which is like the I'm not gonna try which takes out the spirit. But I was so insane, I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna make pretend he's trying. 72 another motherfucker. Sure. All right, let's do this. Wait, do you own this game? No, dude, I don't own this game. I own the Minnesota franchise of this game in the league. Find out on this Daily V. <laughs> do it again, it's Weekly V. It's not Daily V anymore. <laughs> so close, go ahead, here we go. My name's Chanel Perez. I'm a copywriter here at VaynerMedia. And this is actually my last week at the office. My last day is on Friday. I've been here for 
almost six years, five years now. So my meeting with Gary was essentially my farewell meeting, my goodbye. How was that for you? Um, it was great. Gary is a phenomenal leader and I'm actually pretty sad uh, to not be working under him anymore. Um, since I've been here so long, he's kind of uh, just like helped me navigate a lot of tricky things with my career and he's always been very supportive of me. And originally when I went into that meeting, I thought I was gonna be like, hey, I'm so grateful for everything you've done. And of course he kind of like flipped the script and used it to encourage me and tell me how much um, I've grown and how excited he is to see me proceed in my career, so. And I don't know how much you guys see of Gary, but he's just like such a genuine leader and that's something you don't come across often because he's so sharp, but he's got such a soft heart. And like, I think a lot of people see the like content side of him that's like super rough and hard and raw, but he has this ability, like when you get one-on-one -on -one with him, he like really, sincerely cares about what you're going through. So I've learned a lot from him and, you know, I hope to bring that to my next job. So the party that I sent my cousin to, that one, he didn't know how to manage it well. It broke down. So how do you manage, you know, you can't be in two, two spots at the same time. So how do you manage to deal with a lot of things at once? by knowing it might happen. Expect the worst? Expect the worst. By being mentally okay if it happens. It's not the fact that, you know, makes sense. If your cousin didn't know how to do it, it makes sense that that could happen. So by having zero things that most people do, not mad at the cousin, not mad at the situation, just go directly into solutions. It's always solutions for me. Every day, I mean, even right now, like, I got a real thing. This is actually meta as fuck. I got a real thing. I got a dress. Like, you know, next thing pops up in my account, I'm like, oh, fuck these guys. Like, literally, like, real life. Like, yeah. this is not the most important fucking, right? Yeah. But so grateful for the barter we did. I'm super zeroed into you right now. And like, we're gonna wrap up in like a minute or two, take this fucking iconic photo. I hope it gives you a fuckload of business. We'll make sure to use this. Fucking put them right in here right now. Hope it leads to unlimited photo boots from you for everyone who watches the vlog. And then literally like get on the phone and try to fix this situation. The way you handle being in multiple places is being prepared to know that when multiple places are in the mix, that at any moment, you're gonna get 911. Once you go there, and you realize it's so, when you call that place and be like, and they're yelling at you like, you fucking this and fuck you and all that, great. Rick, like, like where I go is I'm like, listen Rick, listen Sally, like you're 100% right. Like the machine broke. Like I really apologize. Like let me, let's, let's take a step back. How can I make this better? And Rick's like, give me all my money back. You make a decision. There's been times where I said yes. There's been times where I said, listen, I'm, I don't want to bullshit you, Rick. I will consider it, but let's get coffee tomorrow. I don't want your fucking coffee, I want my money back. That's exactly what happened to you. Good, now you're gonna make another decision. Now you're like, all right, I'm early in my business, do I want this reputation, do I just take this out? The amount of fucking micro L's I've taken in my life to get to who I am now. Well, that's why I think you are. Sometimes you can't afford that money, giving it back. Sometimes you actually have to fight with the customer because if you don't get it, it's completely over. Did you get a deposit? Didn't you? If you didn't get a deposit and he's like, fuck you, you might not even get it. You in a place to sit? Like, the amount of fucking times I took an L? I didn't know shit. I fucking learned in the dirt. By losing. By losing. Winning didn't teach me shit. It confuses you when you win. It tricks you. Because you didn't learn. You just think you're great. It's losing that's the fucking game. The battle scars are attractive. I'm a mini rock, yeah, with that rich and mini. Yeah, these niggas in me put rats on their head like beanies. Yeah, I catch cat pet, but it when I read it. Yeah, these rats in my pet, extra green like spinach. Live this Wednesday. I mean, he's cutting the hairs. If you're in New York, you need to see this man. Um, headed to Charlotte for a board main meeting. I joined the board of Bojangles, uh, a wonderful QSR company that competes in the chicken space. Heading to the office, 
Gonna do GMA, talk Super Bowl commercials, so keep him busy, vloggy. Can I go can I call you guys vloggy? Yo. How are you? I'm well. Yesterday's yesterday's wine sex was like the first clunker in months. It's, it's really not strong, that's for sure. I think it's a hundred percent because you wrote it. Uh probably can you go higher than hundred percent? Yeah, what's what's greater than a hundred percent? I don't know. I'll tell you what's greater than a hundred percent. Do you know what the wine of the decade was this year or this decade? Because there is one. There's a wine of the decade. Dave Suckling invented something called wine of the decade. I give him a lot of credit. I love James. Uh, the wine of the decade is a super Tuscan. 2017 Almaviva. <laughs> <laughs> what's greater than, I wish he gave it 101. That would have just broke everybody. You know what's funny? I feel like if I rated a wine 101, it'd be similar to when I invented second round picks in our fantasy league in the middle of the season. It's definitely possible, 100%. I think I need to taste like a thousand wines, find the best wine ever and rate it 101 and just watch the entire fucking wine world hate me forever. Brother, before the email newsletter, yeah. I created a fax newsletter and would fax people offers of wine and the list got so big. Yeah, I gotta talk about this more. Yeah, the, li was, the list got I so, right, I'm such a though. fucking idiot. This is why, thank God we have Weekly V now. This will be, <laughs> yeah. nobody knows this. I don't think I've ever said it. I faxed so many people that the list got so big and it was so slow that well, even when I would send the fax at 2 p.m., some people were getting it at two in the morning, and some people, because this was at the height of fax, pre inner email, like right on the cusp, obviously, people had fax in their home offices, so we would get phone calls by, you fucking asshole, you sent me a fax at 1.40 in the morning, fax are loud as fuck, it's like, meh, meh, meh. like people like, kids are crying at midnight, and fucking, they're like, I don't want your fucking Pinot Noir, you're fucking waking up Sally, you know? I'm way, I'm, I'm like 18? Bro, I'm underrated. I haven't even, people think like, I haven't started telling my stories. Hey guys, it's Jason. I'm the editor of the first few episodes of Weekly V. Um, the next meeting you're about to watch is a little behind the scenes uh, of the last episode that I had to make. It was like 36 hours of footage and I was in a dilemma if we should show every meeting that Gary was having or just the hot moments. So then this is me going in there and asking Gary on his feedback. Check it out. It's like 36 hours and kind of caught up in my head if we want to showcase every moment of your day because that's what you've been saying, like B-roll everything, B-roll everything, throw a key over it. Or just show that hot, awesome moment and then roll into the next day so it keeps the food. My, my thought is there's a model to be had where you guys do both. Where, where the moments of the day, I actually think you can show five and a half hours of my day in 15 seconds. And maybe I'm wrong, like I'm looking at you for her, but, but uh, like to me it's like two seconds and writing over it, meeting with fans. Like, 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 like I'm just curious, I've always been curious of that look. I, I always think about it as like the way you guys edit, where it's like, you know, there's like, it's like a long string and it's like, like, like that's kind of how I think about it. It's like 13, like th four and a half minutes of the epic thing and then <laughs> it's like like just literally three seconds of like 17 different rooms I was in and that becomes, you know, I don't know, 51 seconds. It's good math at home, kids. Math. Yeah. <laughs> was, I don't wanna make a vlog and then you'd be like, well, why didn't you show the rest of the day? Great news. Yeah. We're gonna make these for a long time. I don't give a fuck what you do. Make a silent film for this one, I don't give a shit. So I thought that was a really cool meeting with Gary. It showed kind of his creative freedom that he gives us and how he values the marathon of the documentation of these vlogs rather than 
every single episode being perfect. Uh, it was obviously better on me while I'm editing these to you know reduce the pressure. Um, it's just it's cool having a leader that just values the creative freedom. Also, if you guys have any feedback, leave it in the comments. I want to hear what you guys have to say, how we show Gary's life. And now, on with the vlog. You're not coming with, right? Mm -mm. No, I'm just out of here. Cool. Uh, headed to Charlotte, like I said, when I was getting my hair cut, board meeting, uh, dinner with the board tonight, board meeting tomorrow, off to Miami for Super Bowl, a bunch of events, Vayner Sports Party, uh, Mike event for 1.37 p.m. with D. Wade. Um, and, uh, and networking and making fucking shit happen. It's always good to be where everybody is because then shit can happen. Serendipity, motherfucker. What's up, vlog? Uh, just got done with the CMO of uh, Bojangles. We just had a little glass of wine. I'm in, uh, I'm in Charlotte in a proms restaurant. Yeah. The, the scene is epic. I'm all about people in Charlotte. Not to go into the board meeting dinner. Got the board meeting tomorrow. Headed to Miami. Had a bunch of phone calls about our Super Bowl spots. We got three of them. By the time you watch this, they aired. We got the magic. Here's some here's some headlines or clips about them. Team added that in. Let's keep it rolling. Vlog, what's good? Um, sitting here in Charlotte. Just did two client calls, had a call with the new business team, and um, headed to Miami to uh, do some Super Bowl shit. Can't say free. Okay. Oh, oh no, not video. I'm sorry. Hey everybody, I'm Maha. I work with Gary on Team Gary V. My role basically is to help create relationships for Gary in the US and globally so people know what Gary's up to, what the company's doing, and how do we do storytelling on a global scale. So we went to Miami, we had a great time. We went to Radio Row, where basically all of the press are there, and you're speed dating. You're talking to all the media, telling your stories. We had three monster Super Bowl ads this year. So we took the time to get on all the radio stations and TV networks to talk about all things Super Bowl, brands, underpriced attention, why companies should think about doing advertising the Super Bowl, and where we think marketing and Super Bowl mix. So it was super fun, a really cool vibe. Can't wait for you guys to check it out. Check out the vlog and let us know what you think. How you feeling? Prepping? Just like focused in? Yeah, you know me, I'm locked in. I, I know exactly who you are, bro. I know exactly who both of you are. You know, the best part of all this is I don't even reach out to guys, like, you know, there's so many of you in the scheme of thing, but like when we go into, like I'm already working on next year. It's, when you look at a thousand and you get it down to 50 before you even reach out, and then you start really digging into, this is it. Yeah. There is nothing else for me. Right. Like all of you can run 40s, all yeah. of you can bench. The variable is this. Yeah, man, keep doing it, man. It's great to see you. Great to see you, man. I'm rooting for you, bro. I can't wait to see you do your thing. Right. Yeah. Those were two kids that Vayner Sports recruited and we didn't get either. And I think, actually, good job D-Rock because if you look at that interaction, you might think they're like my best friends and actually they delivered disappointing news to us. Uh, but that doesn't take away the humanity. Like I talk a lot about like on the field, like at the time when they went with somebody else, I was like that mother, like literally to that, the, you know, fucking idiot, like doesn't get like, but, but that's like, that's the same way of like losing the game and then you're pissed. But then like when it's over, you're shaking hands. Like those are wonderful kids. It's the reason we were super focused on trying to get them. So um, that was a good job, D-Rock, for me to explain that. Because I think, if you, I think if you play it where you look at the interaction and now I give you the recall and you're like, wait, it shows the class. I don't, maybe that's the right, you know, I don't think of myself as a classic, but like it shows class and like, even though what the situation doesn't work out the way you wanted it to, I'm rooting for those young men. They play a brutal fucking thing. Like, you know, like it's a tough, like the reason we started Vayner Sports is to, that's a tough gig. Like they may only be in the league for two or three years. Like it's, it's tough out there. And so I want those kids to win. After we take a couple of these, we'll go through the sides, hear your hot takes. Yep. And then we're done. Great. Sound good? Great. Great. So first off, can you look into the camera and say your name and Twitter handle? Sure, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, Gary V, two silent E's. 
One of the worst branding moves of all time. Take one more appetizer, how about the burner one? You know what, I need a burner handle. I, I could do some real damage with a burner. You know what, I don't have a burner handle, but I've decided right here on this Super Bowl weekend at the Twitter bar that I'm creating one and it's gonna do huge fucking damage. Am I allowed to curse on the Twitter bar? <laughs> huge fucking damage. Look for my burner account in 2020. Uh, let's pick a couple of entrees. Okay. Anything that... Oh, this is a good one. What was your first screen name? Oh, are you talking just in general in life? Oh, man. My first screen name was G-Nuts. Um, not necessarily the thing I'm most proud about, but uh, if you know like music culture, you'd understand a little bit more. It's not as gross as it sounds, but I had var many variations of G-Nuts, by the way. It was like G-E-N-U-T-S. Then there was one that I used, I think, on Yahoo Messenger with a Z for the nuts part. The, you know, that's, we kept it kind of hardcore in 1999. Do you have a favorite rom-com? Not many people have asked. I, I watch a lot of rom-coms. You know, uh, Crazy Rich Asians like completely like stole my heart. Like, just like a perfect story. Oh, what's that Patrick Dempsey, Can't Buy Me Love? Is that the 1980s Patrick Dempsey? Like that is an all time one for me. So camp, I'm fairly solid with rom-coms. Those two stand out though. Uh, two minutes left in the game. We're down six and driving. What am I telling the team? Two minutes left. We're down six and driving. What do I tell the team? You know, it's funny. I tend to use humor to take pressure off of the situation. So I, and I like to razz my favorite person. So I'd probably look at one of the really fat offensive linemen and I'd probably say something like, hey, after we win this fucking Super Bowl, can you please lose 15 pounds, you fuck? And then everybody would laugh and we'd go score and win the Super Bowl. Okay, we need your take on these sides. Okay, can you just hit them and yeah. then, just, you, th you, you, you throw them at, go through it. Go through them you, can, you, can you throw the name at me and I can go, sure. it'll be even quicker. Balenciaga. Overpriced culture. Post Malone. Underrated pop star. Anime. Uh, deep, deep creativity. Adam Sandler. Uh, all time legend. Sushi. Uh, delicious as fuck. Licorice. Uh, delicious as fuck. Black. Cilantro. Uh, the, one of the three things ever that I didn't like the first time I tasted it, but in my quest to like every single thing to consume, I fought and it went from tasting like soap to now being something that I can actually consume. Candy corn. Uh, get stuck in my teeth, yet I continue to persevere because it's delicious. Kale. Uh, overrated. Cats. Wildly overrated. Taylor Swift. Unbelievably underrated in the way that she built her personal brand. Cargo shorts. <laughs> Confusing, even if, like if you think about how fast I answered everything else, I'm not sure if I love them or hate them. The answer is obviously both. Eggnog. Uh, I'm a huge eggnog consumer. I actually think the way that we have bartenders and sommeliers, I think somebody should emerge in culture as like the eggnog expert and every year in mid-December, we're all waiting for her or him to put out their mini doc on the 13 best eggnogs of 2020. Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda is a Phenomenal, phenomenal job by two people. The creators of it, and then the culture of internet culture to take it and elevate it. Awesome, okay, do you play football at all A ton. Okay, so. Until it got to high school where you actually had to be able to play, and I was like, I'm not joining the football team. But Nerf football, and in high school, everybody who wasn't on the football team, we started an after school football game called Grub Ball, because we were grubby, which was the slang term for we suck. It got so popular, this is real, North Hunter in High School, 1993, 1994. Our side football game that we played above the hill overlooking football practice on the football field called Grub Ball got so popular that legitimately people on the football team quit football. Quit the football team to join the Grub Ball game. I admire everything you're doing. It's Thank really you. awesome. I appreciate watch. it. Thank you for having me. I love Twitter, D Rock. I also love this vlog. I love you. My fucking favorite dude right here. Eat it, Andy. <laughs> I gotta do everything. Honestly, no, bro, we should do that all day long. Like, you guys should come in every day and do like 15 takes. On the hashtag or anything. At the end of the day, like, we might have just fucking, like, like, I'm literally hot taking culture.
That would like I'm really oh, good. No, I'm no, no, really no. good at it. Hot take. Oh, and that can be our YouTube. Yeah. Remember in the story? It's just smart. It's just a good piece of like that was a great piece of content. Internet. And it's a t- and it's internet, it's entertaining. I also like have that Twitter thing? That was really good. I know. Did, were you watching? Yeah, yeah, I watched it. Did you it. listen? Yeah, I didn't. I feel you like really you were Solange networking. Yeah, you were around. I thought I, I, I didn't know you liked cilantro again. I don't. It's not that I, I would again. Talk to the producer so you can say hi to Boomer. I was in the beginning, but then I left. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. She's doing what she's supposed to be doing. Yeah. So you, you can take a, you can Boomer, take a note from Boomer's that. Boomer's coming off. So. Guys, say something for the vlog. One of the best interviews. Here it is. Best thing about uh, wine text. Oh, this is getting better by the second. Is that it comes out at one o'clock every day while you're sitting at your desk, wishing you were drinking a glass of wine, a full bottle of what wine. What about the lack of friction? I just told you. It's you easiest. guys need to eliminate friction. You literally reply with a number. Two, two, two. Because <laughs> yeah, because if you want two one, clubs. if you like one, you gotta have another one. Almost as if it was planned. Almost as yeah. if. Almost. Here's- you gave me a shout out on my podcast. You changed my life, G. I just can't thank you enough, sir. Thank you for saying this is what I live for right here, this moment. Admiration, baby. That's it's what intoxicating. It is. You got a gift to get, man. 100%. Any golden nuggets for what? What, what kind of golden nuggets? Self awareness and kindness are the two fucking things that actually matter in life. You figure those two things out, everything you want will happen. That's G. We're doing great. Very productive execution in Radio Row. He rocked it just saying. Aha did this. Her thing. I clearly did my thing. I mean, just the raw talent. <laughs> it's just unbearable. <laughs> Tonight, uh, I have a Vayner sports party with like sure. the legends of the NFL. Tomorrow, okay. from six to nine, I'm doing this karaoke thing with Dwayne Wade. I'll sure. say, I'll text you the invite. Yeah, man, do that, right. bro. Good to see, good to see you, man. Great to see you. Hey, Alex. Just a pleasure so nice to meet you. I'm Alex. Alex, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, bro. Have a good time. I'll see you guys later. Somebody else. Where were you? No, just had a client meeting, a potential client meeting with a very big brand within the PepsiCo world that we don't work with. Uh, so just working, working with uh, Harwood and Mary Kate okay. from 1:37 uh, p.m. in Purewell. Um, and that's what's really cool about doing events like this. Like you'll come, you'll do radio row for top of the funnel uh, awareness for the commercials we're running for our clients or for Vayner Sports. Um, then you'll run quickly to a meeting where it's just like literally no different than a Tuesday morning meeting, fly to Chicago and have a meeting to meet potential business. But you can get it done in Super Bowl. That's why these big events are so effective. Uh, now run to uh, Bloomberg, talk about uh, on Bloomberg TV, Super Bowl spots. Like, so it's a very dynamic event like where you're mixing. That's what I love about VaynerX. I, I mean, I met somebody already earlier today that we may book as an exclusive speaker at VaynerX, so there's that. Obviously the 1.37 p.m. thing is very much on my mind, big priority in 2020 to get that. Uh, you know, last year was the alpha year, this is the beta year, so 2021 for me is like all of you would be signed up uh, and following uh, 1.37 p.m. Ding! Um, so that is a lot on my mind. Um, Yeah, bro. <laughs> bro, fuck a picture. I need to give a tip of the fucking day with Gary fucking Bean. All right, guys, this is a big thing right now. I have Gary Vayner, Chuck. That's good. He's gonna give you a tip of the day for this weekend, Gary. Tell, tell everybody what you guys can think of him. Be fucking kind, it always works. You heard it from Thank, Thank you, man. I appreciate you. <laughs> I hear at the Vayner Sports, uh, Ray Lewis, uh, legends of NFL party, super excited, doing a ton of networking, a lot of clients, a lot of NFL greats, a lot of athletes, uh, just a really solid networking event. I mean, this is why you come to the CESs and the South Bys and the Cans and all this stuff. You get so much done, obviously in this gorgeous venue at the Hard Rock, how about that? Look at that, the guitar, uh, the Hard Rock guitar, this here, I mean, right back there, that dude that's just walking by, that guy right there, that's the, the Hard Rock CMO. So just making shit happen like we like to do. You know, putting yourself in a position for serendipity to happen matters. Uh, long before an event like this where everybody's coming up to me, I used to go to these things in tech and in wine where nobody knew the fuck I was. And I would just say hello, a hello, you know, just a hello. Hello, sir. You know, just that shit. And, and having the humility and the patience for them to walk by and not give a fuck. Not give a fuck. Because I knew what the score was gonna be. 
when you know what the score is going to be, you're not worried about what the crowd say. And so that's how I live it. And it's still happening right now. Please understand it's still happening right now. I'm just getting fucking started. 99% don't know. I do. Oh, look at that. AJB. <laughs> AJ's in the 1% that knows. I was just telling them that 99% don't really understand what's happening. In general? Yeah. Agreed. Yes. Agreed. I'm always, you know what I mean, checking shit out. I'm Move like, man, man. I'm like, I love this fucking guy, man. <laughs> Thank you, fam. No, no, man, you, you give it to a real, bro. You know what I'm saying? With, with good intent. Yeah. I'm not trying to hurt feelings. I'm trying to get people to win. The right. world's abundant. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to eat regardless. <laughs> but there's so much other fucking food. I want you just to eat. I fucking love you, bro. <laughs> Thank oh, you, bro. Man. Yo, man, I just ran to my man, my man Gary, man. T- tell him, We're Gary. talking about meals out here. Right, he's gonna talk- eat. That's an abundance. I just want people to eat. I ate. I'm gonna continue to eat. I fucking love this guy. He's, he's like, he's like, you shoot it straight. I'm like, with good intent, because I want you to eat. Fucking eat. Right, right. Yo, my man Gary gonna eat the garlic, baby. You gotta get that fucking money, man. That's win, baby. And on some real shit, get that happiness. Yeah. That money's gonna be, you, you get happy, yeah. it can get real, real, real good. Yeah. I got nothing but friends with money that are miserable. <laughs> Find that happiness. We're in Miami. Doing Fox and Friends. Doing Fox and Friends. All right. 7.40 a.m. That's right. Um, on the strip, on the beach strip where all the studios Look at that are. Look at that Look at that it's good yeah, stuff. Yeah, D-Rock, get that shot. I like her. Nice shot, dude. Right? <laughs> uh, gonna talk about the Super Bowl spots. So it's a big day. We got GMA, the Fox and Friends. Just got a ton of media. Bloomberg TV yesterday. Working on something for Monday morning. When's GMA airing? Today. I know. What time? Uh, Do you know? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Yeah. Don't hold my heart to that. Like she didn't necessarily work directly on that one, so she doesn't know exact time. Oh, she does. Yeah. She seemed like not 100% confident. One of the really cool things about being at the Super Bowl in Miami is all the news networks and television stations, sport networks, come and set up their sets live on the beach. So as you guys all know, the Super Bowl was aired on Fox. So Fox Sports, Fox News set up a really great setup. Gary went to go film um, a live interview on Fox and Friends. We walked in, Lou, Coach Lou Holtz from Notre Dame was eating barbecue. They had set up a whole segment about what to eat for the Super Bowl and he was eating ribs. Gary walked on stage, did a great interview and then the band took off and played. It was super great. Can't wait for you guys to see what it looks like. Sabra commercial. The hummus commercial. So this is hummus. Yes. What are we gonna be seeing? You're gonna be seeing a ton of celebrities showing America that hummus can be used with a lot of things besides just carrots and pita. Like okay. what? What? Yeah. Pretzels, broccoli, oh, cereal, know. ice cream. This is obviously the housewives who haven't been seen together for years on TV. So that's gonna cause that fan base a little yeah, ruckus. Yeah. What's good, bro? How you doing? I'm doing real well. How's How are everything? you? Good. Real well. A little bit of word of success, energy. Talk about it. Say something about it. It's all patience, bro. Patience. Everybody just wants shit too fast. Right. That's what fucks up every single person. Absolutely. If they just slowed it down and didn't hear any of these people, it's just fucking patience. Patience is all that we need. It's right fucking now. always. Sure. Yes, sir. How are you, man? I'm really well, bro. How are you? Good. Good. One of the better creative minds in the world that we were just talking about. Started Fuck Jerry, the very famous Instagram account. But beyond that, talent for the real world. Commercial thing that we're doing. Have you, did you see my post where I held up a sign and it said something? Did you see that on Instagram yes, or no? I did. That was a nod to what they did. They created an account. You notice how I never tag anybody, but I tag in my post, do with sign. Um, created that. Listen to me. The tequila. I'm telling you, I know this world, you know I know. There's very few people I give credit to because it's a hard game that we play. Dude knows. So tell me how to save my life. Tell me how to save my life. I'm gonna tell you right now, Will. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, my guy. How are you? <laughs> it's great to see you, fam. Yo, it's good to see you too, bro. You doing well? I feel like I just saw you yesterday because I just, I couldn't find you. I miss you, bro. I miss you too, Say what's up to my partner, Ryan. How you doing? Pleasure. I love well, you remember, you remember D-Rock? Yeah, good to see you, bro. I love when people come up to you <laughs> and, like, and ask you like, yo, tell me, <laughs> tell me what I'm doing wrong. I gotta amazing. like analyze it in seconds. Yeah, no context. Yeah, no context. What do I do now? What are you doing? Um, so I'm here 
to it. We're performing here tonight at night. Right after, I know they are. And then I'm here launching. Um, how long are you in the hotel for? I'm here because we have an event with Dwayne Wade, the karaoke thing from six to nine today. Here? Before you. Oh, come sure, and hang. We wanted you to fucking MC. <laughs> can, can you and Dwayne Wade come and see me and Jay Balvin's product that we're launching? Right after? No, just anytime, anytime. I'm here. here. Hotel. I'm here until six. Right. I, I'll hit you. I'll hit you. Wait, wait. Well, I'm here about to have your new one. Yeah. I, I don't have a new one. You got it because you picked me up the other day. Let me see if I. Uh, we are prepping for the big event, uh, the 137 uh, karaoke event with Dwayne Wade. Super excited. Right now we're shooting some influencer stuff and different campaign work on the 137 uh, side. And uh, everyone's prepping for a couple hours from now um, on the actual event. I'll be judging. Uh, if you know anything about my judging capabilities, I will not be pushed over by the talent. I don't care how much I like them as a human. I don't care how much the crowd likes them. I will be making my fucking judgment on their talent, on the Yoki, better known as Carrie Yoki. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. We have time now. So. <laughs> you have a Jets tag? Let's fucking go. Oh, wow. <laughs> Notice how I knew exactly what he was gonna show me? I fucking love that, bro. I fucking knew it. Got a little heat. A little Dr. J. What? I gotta put this in the office? Don't direct me, dear. And talented, that's a good situation. I mean, I know. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I mean, it's definitely unplugged, so you could oh, definitely this hear. This is really awkward. Oh. <laughs> I thought your favorite meme was when Dustin's always got technical difficulties and we're always four minutes behind on the podcast. Dustin, I know you made a big appearance for being super attractive on episode one or two, but this shit fucking has got to get tight. I swallow every piece of gum. I've swallowed every piece of gum that I've ever chewed in my life. How big is that? Fusion, nobody, and I mean nobody blog, takes better bathroom selfies than me. Blog, if you think I knew that El Paso and San Antonio were nine hours apart, you're nuts. I thought they were super close. Uh, Sorry guys. <laughs> no problem. How are you? How's your run going? Good, I do it. I I'm one of the, hey baby. I did change my life. You I'm rock, so I really Thank like you. you. Thank you. <laughs> She's pumped. Uh, she was, I know. After you, excuse me. Yes, sir. I know you. You do. I'm Gary. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, mate. I've heard from you before. Thank you, man. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you like that answer? Are you? You do. <laughs> Just a good answer. Make a video. Actually be, Do you want to be on video? Are you interested in be on video, sir? Okay, have a good day. Basically, we work on a team where we create videos. Dang it, I closed it out. He does like motivational stuff. Stop giving a fuck what other people think. Oh my god, I see a man. I'm gonna approach him. No, he's walking away. He's moving way too fast. Follow him. Follow him. All right, I'm in the same. Okay, he's moving away. Excuse me, do you have one second? Mm -hmm. Do you have one second? Or are you super busy? All right, yeah. see ya. Okay, it didn't work. It's not working. This ain't working. Now I can, now I'm finally seeing how harsh New Yorkers are. <laughs> I'm not interested, but rejection. These guys, yep. no, never mind. Let's go outside. Oh my God, it's so cold. Ooh, I feel it on my bones. Do you know Gary V? We're going on a trip. Very rocket ship. And I do this cat. Oh, oh no, he's walking. Oh, he got long legs. Oh no, he's going fast. Okay, can't catch up. Damn it. Gary, you got 7.6 million 
almost 8 million followers and none of them are here? What the f <laughs> Then why don't we just do it in the office with everyone? We can! Damn it! I'm just gonna keep walking. Man, where do we find loud people that like just want to be on camera? Are we not approaching them the right way? Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Maybe we're just not uh, doing it right. Maybe, maybe we secretly film them. That's illegal. Okay, never mind. <laughs> maybe how much we we got like six homies now. I think so. Yeah. That's nice. Wow, hard work pays off. I'm giving all of this to Jason for the weekly. Do not. <laughs> <laughs> look at look at him going out there and like, oh, I'm gonna go get lunch. How are you guys doing over here? Failing. All right.